Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to another free online GCC maths lesson. Um, today we're going to be doing trigonometric ratios in two dimensions and we're going to start in about a minute or so. It's almost 11 o'clock. So we'll get cracking in very shortly. Okay, good morning again everyone. So we're going to do um, trigonometric ratios in two dimensions today um, and we're going to build on that theme of search and rescue which we started on last week. Don't worry though if you wasn't here last week, we can do all this as a standalone. Um, as per usual, uh, my name's Mr Smart and I'm taking today's session and we're just trying to link it to, to something more relevant, something more real. Big focus on sort of those problem solving type questions today. So what will you need? You'll need pen, pencil, paper, calculator, and we'll, we'll pretty much be rounding all answers to two decimal places unless otherwise stated through today's session. So um, just keep that in mind. But there are quite a few questions where you need to round to a different level of accuracy, but it's, I'll tell you when. Objectives we're going to cover today. Understand, use, and recall the trigonometric ratios sine, cosine, and tan and apply them to find angles and lengths in general triangles in 2D figures. We're going to be calculating more angles than lengths, but we will be doing lengths as well, so both of those things will come up in today's session. And then using the trigonometric ratios to solve 2D problems. So again, we'll be linking it to 2D problems, mainly involving rescuing people in terms of like uh, search and rescue like we mentioned at the beginning. Okay, how does it work? Anything in blue is an activity for you to have a go at, for something for you to work on. If something has a purple background or is written in purple, it represents a slightly harder task or just where I'm asking you to think in a slightly different way. And that's something, I think I do it once today, only once because the, the work's quite hard anyway. But there is one example where I ask you to think in uh, and compare something. And then anything with a yellow box covering something is basically a solution box which is covering an answer. Okay, so for example here, I'm sure you've all seen this before but I'll just do it again. This is covering the answer to substitute x equals x equals 3 into the following expressions. 4x subtract 16, so 4 times 3 is 12. 12 take away 16 is negative 4. And if I substitute it into the second one, I get 3 squared is 9. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 add 3 is 30. So that was covering the answer to those first two questions there. Right, let's get to it. Let's get on with today's session. Before we do that though, before we actually get into the questions, I need to recap on a few things, okay? And you may need to take notes here because I can't have everything on the screen at the same time. So you may want to take uh, a quick note of trigonometric, trigonometric uh, right angle ratios. So as you can see here, I've put them up on the screen just in case. And I'm using this angle here which I've called alpha, just to say, by the way, alpha is just like the Greek letter A. It's like the Greek version of A. And we tend to use them a lot with angles. And you can see I've labelled it, hypotenuse is the longest side, always. And it's the side opposite the right angle. Adjacent is the angle that is next to the, uh, the angle. In this case, it's this length here. And the, the opposite side is the side. This angle here, if you think about it, is created by this line and this line here. The only line that has nothing to do with creating that angle is the side that is opposite. So just to get you back, labeling is where most of the mistakes happen with trigon trig trig trigonometry questions. So keep that in your mind. To say as well, the ratios. Sine of alpha would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos of alpha would be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of alpha would be equal to opposite over adjacent. Hopefully you've all seen these. Okay, so this shouldn't be anything new to you but just going over it because you'll need it for today's session. And then likewise underneath, I've just recapped on bearings. And in mathematics, a bearing is measured in a clockwise direction from north. So effectively here, if I just go over this one in red, okay, 
I start at north, you can see I've labelled it N, N for standing for north, and I go in a clockwise direction and I get 55 degrees. But I have to write that as 0, 055 five degrees because we have to use three digits. Okay, if you look at the second one, you can see here I've got north and I've got to measure it in this direction clockwise. Okay, and why have I put 270 there? I've got 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So 90, 90, 90, that's 270, and then I've added on the 20. So 270 degrees add 20 gives me a bearing of 290 degrees. So that's just a recap. Please take notes if you need to remember anything, because you'll need this knowledge all the way through. Okay, apologies about that folks, I realise now that the screen was zoomed in for some reason, um, I don't quite know why that happened, um, I'm really sorry about that, so I better go back and just uh, recap um, from here, so, so what I was doing here was just making sure people could take notes on, on their work, um, and I've gone over the, re the trigonometric ratios, so you probably heard me say this, but you couldn't see what I was talking about. But what I've said is, is that you'll need these for the rest of the session. So I'll keep going. All right. I, I mean, I may have to, to to take some of this edit out later, but I'll keep going for now. So sine alpha is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cos alpha is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of alpha is equal to opposite over adjacent. And then in mathematics, a bearing is measured in a clockwise direction from north. The bearing is given with three digits. And what I was doing down here was just actually showing you how bearings work. So for instance here on that first one, it's important here because we need it all the way through, we measure it from a north direction and we've got 55 degrees, we've gone in a clockwise direction, see we've gone this way, but we need to write it with three digits so it should be 055, okay, so it should be 055 degrees and then on the one on the right hand side you can see I've sort of already done the calculation underneath but just to show you how I did that calculation Again, I have to measure it in a clockwise direction, okay? And what we've got there is, if we do it like this, it, I've shown you this big sort of, but each one of these quadrants is 90 degrees. And this is how I, I actually still do bearings in, in my head. I, mean, I don't always draw it out, but in my head, this is how I think it through. So I've got 90 degrees, add 90 degrees, add 90 degrees, which is 270. And then 270, add 20, gives me a bearing of 290 degrees. So bearings will always be from north in a clockwise direction and must have three digits. Okay, sorry about the zoom folks because it sort of slowed me down a bit but I'll keep, like I said, I'll just keep going. And I'm going to do this one in real time. Okay, so hopefully we don't get any glitches technically here. So I'm going to calculate lifeboat B, which is here. Okay, I'm going to calculate the bearing of lifeboat B to this blue ship which is sinking and I'm going to create this in real time. So I'm actually going to draw the triangle myself and I'm going to do this here. So you can see me creating the triangle. And there's a right angle there, okay. I'll draw the right angle in just to be consistent. And the reason I'm doing it in real time is I think actually that adds something to it. You know, obviously I can pre-prepare all of this stuff, but when you see someone do something in real time, I think it adds something. So, I know there that that length is 13 and this length here is 3. And I know what I need to figure out here. I know I need to figure out this angle here, and I'll call it alpha, which is basically like A, but it's just the Greek letter for A. And I'm going to work out this angle using trigon trigonometry. So, what have I actually got here? Well, I know that this length here is my opposite. And I know that this length here is my adjacent. Okay, so I know that the adjacent side is 3 and the opposite side is 13. So I'm going to look at my ratio and I'll write them here.
and I'm looking for the one that's got opposite and adjacent. And obviously I've abbreviated O for opposite, A for adjacent, H for hypotenuse, but I can see clearly here I'm going to use the tan ratio. And so I'm going to set it up now. I'm going to just set it up straight away. So I'm going to say, okay, tan of the angle, in this case the angle's alpha still, is equal to, okay, um, opposite, which is 13, divided by adjacent, which is 3, and then I'm going to work through now. I say, okay, what do I do here? A lot of students think, oh, what do I do here? Well, I can obviously do 13 divided by 3. I can put that in the calculator, and I'm going to get 13 over 3, or 4.3 recurring. But how, what do I do next? Well, if you look on your calculator, the inverse of tan, if you look at the, the tan button on your calculator, just above it is tan, and it's to the power minus 1, but it basically it's inverse tan. So we're going to do shift tan, 13 divided by 3, okay, and when you see shift tan, when you look on your calculator screen, most of you will be using a Casio of some description, I imagine, you'll see that it's put it as tan to the power minus 1, but that is just the inverse, it's the inverse of tan, so think about the inverse of adding 3 is subtract 3, the inverse of square rooting something is to square it, the inverse of tan here is tan to the power minus 1, that's as far as we need to go today on that, and I'm literally going to put it in my calculator exactly the way I've just said it. And that's going to give me alpha is equal to 77. Um, I'll do it to two decimal places, so what would that be? 0 0.01 degrees. Now, am I finished yet? Am I finished yet? No. And the reason I'm not finished yet is because that's not going to be a bearing. Okay, so just think about it down here, you've got from north, okay, you know you've got this part of the angle is 77.01 degrees, and then you know this is a straight line, so that's going to be 180 degrees, so the bearing is going to be given by adding those two things together, so I'm going to add 180 on, so the bearing that that lifeboat needs to, to sail on to get to that sinking ship would be 180, add 77.01, which would be 257.01 degrees. Okay, and it would be 257 degrees to the nearest one degree. Now, I know I've done that in real time. I Hopefully, that's come up clear on your screen, but I've literally gone from drawing the triangle, putting the units on, because obviously it's a scale here. You might not be able to see that on your screen so clearly, to calculating the angle that I need and then calculating the bearing that I need in one one go and now I'd like you guys to have a go at doing something similar on the next one now these are the same questions in, in many ways that we did last week okay and I've given you different pieces of information so if you cast your mind if you was here last week what we have here is we have a ship sinking here in the middle of that red target which is what I've just highlighted again there that's where the ship was last seen okay it's sinking and lifeboat B has launched from here. And initially, we know it's got to travel 6.80 nautical miles and then 7.28 nautical miles to get to there. But what we don't know is the bearings that it needs to take. So we need to calculate this angle and this angle and then actually calculate the bearings. And that's what I'm going to ask you to do. So do you want to have a go at that for me? And I will start to go through the first part in a couple of minutes. All right, and you can see very clearly now diagrams there just to reiterate alpha is just a Greek letter that's all it is and so is beta so that's all it is so don't don't let that throw you at all good luck
Okay, on that first triangle where I'm trying to calculate alpha, I'm just going to just go through the ratio that I used, first of all, just so you can see, just in case you're struggling and you don't know whether to use sine, cosine or tan. I'll just write here, just in case, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. And a lot of you will, would have, your teacher would have given you short uh, ways to remember this. Okay, I'm sure that's probably happened already. And I'm going to look here, I'm going to say, okay, I've got this angle alpha, I know my hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the one I always find easiest to spot because I sort of know it's the sort of diagonal side opposite the right angle. So I know the hypotenuse and then here I've got the opposite as well. Okay, do I know anything about the adjacent? No, I could work it out because I could use Pythagoras, but why bother? I'm, I'm looking for an angle here, not a length. So I'm going to use the opposite and the hypotenuse. So I'm looking for O and H. So I'm going to use sine for that first one. And then on the second one, beta, I've got this length here, which is 2, which is going to be the adjacent. And I've also got the hypotenuse again here. So I've got adjacent and hypotenuse. So for beta, I'm going to use the cosine, car. Okay, I'm going to use that one. So I'll go through the first bit here. And I've set it up. So I've got sine of alpha. Okay, because I've used alpha here, so I've just kept that symbol the same in my working out here, is equal to 4 divided by 6.80. And working that through, that comes out to be 0 0.588. And then I've done exactly what I said before. I've used shift sign of that, num of that number 0 0.588 to give me that angle. And that angle is 36.02 degrees to two decimal places. But I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet because I need the bearing. So how have I done that bit? Well, I've looked at it here and I've said, OK, what do I have here? I have a right angle. And I've done 90 take away that answer to give me the bearing. So the bearing will be 053.98 degrees or 0. Five, four to the nearest one degree okay so that's the first one I'll let you have a go at finishing off the next one and then I'll go for it in a minute or so Okay, so let's have a quick look at this one then. Second one, and as you can see, it was cosine of beta. I've used the same letter just in the calculations. I've got adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side was 2, which is what's gone here. And the hypotenuse was 7.28, which you can see here. And then I've worked it through. So what have I got? I've got cos of beta is equal to 2 divided by 7.28, and then I've just worked it through. Okay. And beta is equal to inverse co cosine of 0.274725, which comes out to be 74.05. And again there, though, is that the bearing that you're actually going to take? Is that actually the answer? No, because you need to work out the actual bearing. So it would be 90 degrees, take away the 74.05, which gives you 15.95. And even then... You still need to put a zero in front of it to make sure that it's got three digits. And that would be zero, one, six degrees to the nearest one degree. So that's what we're doing. It's quite, I, I realise there's a little bit more going on, but real life isn't simple sometimes. You have to do a few calculations. So that boat 
would have to travel 6.80 nautical miles on a bearing of 054 degrees for the first leg of the journey. Then once it gets to this point here, it would change course to bearing 016 degrees and it would travel on that bearing for 7.28 nautical miles until it gets to where the ship was last seen sinking. And then hopefully it would rescue the people on board and get them back to shore as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's have a look at another one here. In purple here, this is effectively the same problem, but Daniel says that his way of doing the calculation makes it a lot easier to work out the bearing with no extra work. Do you agree? Okay, so we still have to figure out these angles, okay, that we've been put on here. But the, Daniel is saying his way of doing the initial calculation by setting up the triangles in a different way, a different orientation, makes the whole thing a lot easier. Do you agree? So I want you to redo the calculations and then decide if you think Daniel's way is easier or not. Okay, I'm just going to, just in case anyone's stuck and they're struggling for the first step, I'm just going to quickly go through this. I, I think I've labelled it up. I've got, I, I know that the opposite here, the opposite side to the angle alpha is 5.5, and I know the adjacent side is 4. Do I know anything about the hypotenuse? No, not at the moment. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about the hypotenuse. I'm looking for opposite and adjacent, and that's going to be TOA. So that's the ratio I'm going to use and I'm going to set that one up here. So I've got tan alpha is equal to 5.5 divided by 4, and then I'm going to systematically work it through. 5.5 divided by 4 is 1.375. I'm then going to do inverse tan of that number, so inverse tan of 1.375, and that gives me a value of 53.97, which would be 053.97 as a bearing. Interesting here, though, I don't have to do any adjustment. I've already got the bearing because this line here is already here and it's going upwards in a northerly direction. So it saved me a step at the end there to work out the bearing. Have a look at beta, see if it does the same thing. Okay, let's have a look at the second part, the beta part. What I like about this is that it's using the same ratio here. I'm still going to use tan, and I'll just show you why quickly. Because it's opposite here and adjacent here, 
and I've got tan, it should be tan beta actually, shouldn't it? There. Tan beta is equal to 2 over 7, and that will come out to be. I just need to write over that because I've left it as alpha and it should be beta. And it should be 0 0.285714 is the actual amount. And then we're doing inverse tan of that number. And that comes through to be beta is equal to 15.95, which again we can put as 0 015.95 degrees as a bearing. And if we compare that to the previous one where we calculated it, you'll see that we did it differently, but we got the same bearings. I mean, there's a slight difference there, 0 053.98 degrees, and that's to do with rounding, you know, how many decimal places you put in the calculator, etc. We've got 0 053.97 degrees there, but you get the idea. Okay, which way was easier? I would say this this way here, Daniel Daniel's way was easier because we had less working out to do at the end. The bearing was already done because he drawn the triangles in a slightly different way. Okay, have a look at this one. This one's slightly different. Here, you've been given one angle and one length, and you need to work out the length of the first leg of the journey and the bearing for the second leg. Okay, off you go. Okay, you can see here I've I've decided to use sine. I'll just go through quickly why I've used sine. Okay, if you take the angle here, I've got the opposite, which is five. The opposite side is five, and I, I need to work out the hypotenuse here. So I'm interested in the opposite and the hypotenuse, and the ratio that has that is sine. And a lot of you will think of that as so, so opposite over hypotenuse sine ratio. So what have we got here? We've got sine of 39, sine of the angle, in this case the angle is 39.8 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, which is 5, divided by the hypotenuse, which in this case is what we're trying to find out, and I've labelled as C. And we can rearrange, okay? So the step there that I'm actually doing is the inverse of dividing by C is to multiply both sides through by C and I've divided both sides through by sine of 39.8. Now some of you will just know to switch switch the two around, okay, but that's why it works. That's There's, there's two steps there that you can do if, you, if you're not sure, okay. So one is to times both sides by C, and the other bit is to divide both sides through by sine of 39.8. That's why that line can work. And you get C equals 5 divided by sine of 39.8. Just be careful how you enter that into your calculators, okay, but you will get the length or you should get the length C equals 7.81. And that's what I've got there. That's that's the length worked out for C. And then the second part is to work out the bearing. And the bearing here is going to be given by tan this time. And again here, I've used opposite and adjacent. And it's just about labeling it up correctly. And I've labeled the angle alpha there. And I've worked it through. So I've got opposite, which is 1.5, divided by adjacent, which is 6. And then I've done inverse tan of 1.5 divided by 6, which is 0 0.25, and that gives me a 
value of 14.04 degrees, which again, as a bearing, would be 014.04 degrees or 014 degrees to the nearest degree. Okay. Have a look at this one. You've got all the values. You could so effectively, when you have a situation like this, you could choose which one of the ratios you use. Okay, but what I'd like you to do here, he's a Bertrand is a trainee lifeboat dispatcher. He has calculated the bear, bearing of lifeboat A to the sinking ship, so he's calculated the bearing. But why is Bertrand's calculation not practical? And it's for the same reason as it was last week. But it's interesting though, just to make sure that you just don't just look at the maths, but you actually look at the practicality of why sometimes you, you need to use maths in different ways. So I'll give you a minute or so to work through that one. Okay, I'll just go through why I used certain, certain calculation. I, I decided to use tan again. I labelled it up and I said, okay, from this angle here, which I've, again I've called alpha, I've got opposite, adjacent, and I've got the hypotenuse. And of course, some of you could have gone a different way here. You could have tried things in a different, you could have done things using cosine or sine here, but I've used tan. So I've done tan of alpha is equal to the opposite side which is 9 divided by the adjacent side which in this case is 12 and then I've worked it through systematically so tan of alpha is equal to 0.75 I've then done inverse tan of 0.75 as you can see on that line there and that has given me 36.87 is that the bearing? no okay here we actually need to draw let me just find the right arrow. I always get the arrows mixed up. Is that the one that's going to go north? Yep, straight away. So that one's going up towards north. Let's label that clearly. So how am I actually going to work out this angle here? Because that's the bearing. I'm going to do 90 minus my value of alpha. So that's where that next line has come from. So 90 degrees subtract 36.87 gives me a bearing of 053.13 degrees, which is 053. degrees to the nearest one degree okay why is it not practical well he's taking a ship across a land so obviously that ship's not going to be able to go that route which is why all the other dispatchers were going around the island rather than through it now if it's a helicopter it's a different ball game of course if it's a helicopter you could go across that land mass and that's why obviously helicopters are can be very practical for doing land rescue as well as rescues at sea Okay, I'm not sure how much time we're going to have to do all of these, so I think, let me just have a quick look at uh, this one. Okay, all right, let's have a quick look at this one. Okay, both bearings, okay, I've given you all the lengths there on the first one, that first triangle, so again, you can choose, you know which angle you need to work out, though you're going to need to work out this angle here and you're going to need to work out this angle here and I'll leave you to, to have a go through that now for a couple of minutes and then we'll move forward and hopefully we should still finish just about on time a few minutes late because obviously a few technical glitches thank you
I'm just going to reveal the first one. So you can see, hopefully you're in the, the groove now of actually just being able to work through, identify the correct ratio, trigonometric ratio to use and then executing it. There's the bearing. Okay, so it'd be 0, 082 degrees to the nearest one degree for the first one. And then for the second part, you've got sine beta equals 1 over 7.57. Just to quickly say here, this one here you had to use sine. So I've got opposite and I've got hypotenuse and I've had to use sine there to work that one through. So that's where that ratio has come from. I've worked it through, okay, beta is equal to inverse sine of 0.12891518, and again now, this time the bearing is straight away, but I need to make sure I put three digits in, so it would be 007.59 degrees, which would be 008 degrees to the nearest one degree. So. And you might be thinking, why are there three digits in a bearing? I think it's because the bearing can only go from 0 to 360. So if you think about it, the maximum number of digits you can have is three. And it's just consistent to have three digits all the way through. I also think communication-wise, if you've got people talking across the sea or across the airwaves, it's more exact to give three digits. So if you say zero, a bearing of 0, 0, 8 degrees, you know, I think that's quite a clear way of, of saying it. So it probably cuts down on communication errors as well. Okay, so let's just quickly keep going here. All right, have a quick look at this one. I know this one's slightly different. Here the calculation has been done, okay, but you are the helicopter dispatcher who has just started your shift. You need to check the previous dispatchers working out to make sure you are confident. Right, basically, you need to be confident in their calculations. So what I'm saying here is you've just taken over and this calculation here is there already you're dispatching the helicopter from the helipad to where the sinking ship is. Remember, this is an ongoing rescue situation, so you know you've got to get the helicopter to here. But can you check Vera's calculations, please? And are they correct, or is there anything missing? I'll give you a minute or so to have a little think about that, and then please make sure you have a go at working out what's missing or what needs correcting, if you do find anything. Okay, hopefully you've been through it and you think you're looking at it and you're thinking, okay, first thing that where where people might have gone wrong would be, okay, what could have happened uh, with the uh, getting the uh, correct ratio? So I've looked at this and I've said, okay, let's just make sure I've got the correct ratio. So I've got the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So what I'm happy there is is okay cosine. Adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay, I'm happy that the right tri trigonometry, trigonometric ratio has been used. So I've got 12.5 over 15. Are they the right way round? Is it adjacent over hypotenuse? Yes, it is. So I'm happy that line's looking correct. So then I've done 12.5 divided by 15.58. Does that give me 0 0.80231? Yeah, it does. Okay, that, that dot above just means recurring. We won't get into that today, but that's how it would have, would have appeared on your calculator. And then I've said, okay, the inverse of cos of that number, and that gives me 36.65. Okay, I'm happy with that. But what's missing here? What's missing here is 
Vera's done that part of the calculation correct, but what she hasn't done is giving the correct bearing, because obviously the bearing would be measured from north in a clockwise direction. We've got 90 degrees here, okay, and we need to do 90 add the angle alpha, so we need to do 90 add 36.65 to give the correct bearing for the helicopter pilot. So 90 add 36.65, I'll do that one quickly in my head, that should be 126.65 degrees. I'll round that to the nearest degree, so that'd be 127 degrees. So that helicopter should be going on a bearing of 127 degrees for 15.58 nautical miles to reach where the sinking ship is. Unfortunately, if I hadn't double checked that calculation, the helicopter would have been going off in this direction somewhere, so way off. So it's really important when you're in life and death situations that you do the calculations fast but accurate. And obviously here, where you had a change over a staff, it might, Vera's calculation wasn't wrong, she might have just maybe hadn't finished it yet. But as you go in, you need to double check those calculations and there you go, they, that would have been a big difference. That potentially could have cost a lot of time and actually cost lives if you hadn't done that calculation. Right, let's have a look at some exam type questions. A nice uh, bog standard one here for you to have a look at and I'll go through this one in a couple of minutes. Please just remember it does say three significant figures. So where we've been working it's two decimal places and then rounded to the nearest degree for the bearings most of the way through. Here it does specifically state three significant figures. Okay, I'm going to um, just quickly go through this one now because it's not a particularly difficult exam question, but the key thing is to identify which trig ratio to use, and it's going to be tan here because we know the opposite is 5 and the adjacent is 6. We don't know anything about the hypotenuse, and we don't want to know anything about the hypotenuse. So we're going to use the opposite and the adjacent, which we do know, to figure out this missing angle here, which in this case is just called A, not alpha. It's actually just called A, folks. And you can see here, I've set it up as tan of A is equal to 5 over 6. And then I've done inverse tan of that number. 5 divided by 6 gives me 0 0.83 recurrent. You might just leave it as a fraction in your calculator, it's up to you. But what that will do is it will give you A is equal to 39.8055 We need to round that to three significant figures. So first significant figure is the 3, second is the 9, third significant figure in this number is the 8, and so it's going to be 39.8 to 3 significant figures, as you can see. And under there it should be 39.8 degrees, and indeed it is. Okay, so that's a nice sort of bog standard sort of trig question. Have a look at this one now. Uh, work out the distance of ship B to ship C, okay? And clearly there's a lot of other questions could have come off this on bearings, but we're not going to get time for all of those today. But maybe if we just have a go at the distance of ship B to ship C, that would be great. The information that you need is in the question. So 
you might need to, to translate some of this information from the sentence at the top actually onto the diagram. It hasn't all been done for you. Okay, I've put the uh, the measurements on this time, and what we've done here is we've correctly identified which ratio to use, and that's the key thing here again. So, what have we actually got here? We've got this angle, because angle ABC is equal to 23 degrees. We know that the length AB, so the gap from ship A, is 12 kilometers uh, from ship B, so that length there is 12 kilometers, and we need to work out this length here, BC, that's the length that we've been asked to calculate. So I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, I've got the adjacent, I know the adjacent side to this angle is 12 kilometers, I know that, and I need to work out the hypotenuse, which in this case is called BC. So I'm gonna use cosine, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So I've got cosine of the angle involved, in this case the angle is 23 degrees, is equal to the adjacent side, which is 12, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the length BC. And then I've basically just worked it through. So I've said, okay, I'm going to rearrange to get BC on its own, which is equal to 12 divided by cosine of 23 degrees. I've put that into the calculator and rounded, and I get BC is 13 kilometers to the nearest kilometer. Okay, and if you put that in, if you wanted the exact answer, you'd have done 12 divided by cos 23, okay, you would have got 13.03632453, and as I didn't actually specify in the question to round to the nearest kilometre, you'd have done it to two decimal places, so it would have been 13.04 kilometres to two decimal places, which is 13 kilometres to the nearest kilometre. That was a good one, folks. It's quite a hard one because you're doing a lot there. Bearings, trigonometry, even Pythagoras came back into it a little bit. And these questions, you know, they are more involved. They are harder. They are more problem-solving based. But that's the whole point of these sessions is that they are more based around problem-solving in real life. So hopefully you enjoyed that one. Any feedback, as always, we'd welcome it. And we'll see you for the next one, hopefully, next week, which will be... Or Thursday, actually. So we've got one at Thursday at 11 o'clock. And then we've got another couple of weeks left before we finish for the summer. Hope to see you at the next one. Thank you.